Good evening, brothers and sisters, YouTube viewers, whether you're agnostic, atheist, Christian, Muslim, Baptist, whatever you proclaim to be, this video is for you to think about. I just want to ask the question, and I'll probably title this video, Truth. Why do Christians fear it? Christians, why do you fear the truth? Like, I used to be a very uh, uh, um, excited, very uh, passionate uh very radical um, um, believer of the uh, Bible. And I used to preach it and I pastored for three years and a lot of you know that by now you know my journey and my story. And I still am very passionate about truth. There comes a time when you begin to mature in your so-called religion or so-called pursuit of truth um, um, that all you want is truth. And this is the problem that I always had with Christianity even when I was preaching in the so-called Christian circles. I began to evolve and realize that uh, uh, religion is not even of God. And I began to realize that Christianity, the religion of Christianity, doesn't even back up itself with its own Bible. And I always question why different Christians believe different things if we're talking to one God. Well, obviously, I evolved into a lot of things. And I got to the point where I realized that this is not the word of God. And that's where we're all programmed. When you first come, before you learn anything else, is to believe that this is the word of God. So you would believe it as if God spoke to you. But the problem that I always had through the eight years of my journey was that when I would ask different pastors in different states and different denominations certain questions, they would either get mad or they would think that you were unruly or that you're challenging uh, a God and all these other things, but they would never give an answer. And I couldn't understand that our Bible, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says that we should always be ready to give an answer. Now, if you have the truth, why wouldn't you want to give the answer, especially you pastors or you Christians? You claim that your religion is the truth. You should have no problem with somebody asking a question. You should desire to give out the answers, and you definitely shouldn't be running from debate. Debate isn't always bad. I mean, according to the book itself, it says that you should contend for the faith. Uh, uh, there's scriptures that say that uh, you should be able to convince the gangsayer or the opposition. So if someone did believe opposite of you, why would you get mad? Why wouldn't you be able to use God's word, as supposed, supposed God's word, and no one should be able to defeat it or go against it? And your purpose is to bring them to the the so-called truth. I mean, according to the Bible, doesn't it say that the truth will make you free? So why is it that Christians fear when someone challenges something that they are presenting to others as truth? And truth is absolute. I, I had a guy come up to me the other day and we was talking, discussing things. And uh, um, I asked him, does he really even believe what he reads or believes what he's trying to say to me right now? So I asked him, I said, do you really believe it's the truth that a snake talked to Adam and Eve? And he said, yes, he has to believe it by faith. So my question is, is truth and faith two different things? Because he knew that he shouldn't be saying that he really believes a snake talks, but he only believes it by faith. But faith is the assurance of things hoped for. That means you are 100 million percent sure that it is the truth. You're 100 million percent sure that a snake talked to Adam and Eve. You're 100 percent sure uh, uh, that a donkey did talk. You're 100 percent sure that Jonah did get swallowed by a whale. You're 100 percent sure that God did get mad and flood the whole earth and killed off everybody but uh, eight other people. You, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? You're either sure that Jesus Jesus is God or he's just the son of God? Which one is it? Did Jesus say that he was coming back and his disciples would be alive? Or do you just believe by faith that he's still coming back? Because you know that according to the Bible, he would have had to come back 2,000 years ago. So you turn it into, you turn what is the truth into faith and as if faith and truth is not the same thing. And I ask Christians, why do they do that? Many people have been coming to my um, uh, page and saying different things like, I don't believe in Jesus, I need to be introduced to Jesus, I don't have the spirit, and all these other things. But yet, they, but when I come back with an answer or a question, they automatically have excuses. Oh, you don't really believe the Bible, so why should I talk to you? Oh, I'll never take a debate because you don't even believe, and you won't ever listen if we did debate. But, but, but yet, they come to the page and say stuff, but they're not willing to come out in public and present what they have. See, this is one thing that I never struggled with. I always said it. I believe in the truth. And I'm willing to challenge it or someone challenge it because I believe that it's the truth. If you really believe what you believe, you would have no problem with presenting what you believe in a public form and being able to prove it with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then, and then you Christians who make excuses about, oh, I'm not going to debate publicly with you. All through the Bible, God's chosen people would debate. I mean, do you did you ever read your book about Elijah who said, OK, I challenge you. Meet me at Mount Carmel. Bring all of the prophets. And then we will see who's basically with God. 
So, so why doesn't people still operate like that today? Also, uh, the Apostle Paul, it says he was in a synagogue disputing daily with different people. Disputing daily. That means arguing about what is the truth, what's not. It doesn't have to be a fight. It's just you standing for what you believe in and presenting it. And if it's the truth, no one can, no one, me, no one at all can deny truth or, or, or you could deny it, but you cannot remove truth. Truth is absolute. In other words, it's one million percent for certain. There's nothing that should be able to go up against it. And that's what I say about this book, uh, the Bible. Uh, I preach it. I would, I would challenge anyone to try to tell me if they said this was infallible. I'd have said, prove it to me. Show it to me. But I was willing for it to hear because I would have never thought you could do it because this is supposedly God's word. And I still believe God is a perfect God and you cannot go against God's word. So if God says it, then so be it. There would be no errors, no contradictions, no fabrications or nothing. But I come to find out there is errors and fabrications and contradictions in this. Now, the problem is the error in the Christian doctrines that they try to present to us that we must believe. And then when you use the book that they supposedly got it from, you begin to find out that the doctrines that they come up with are of, of men and not even in this book. Uh, for instance, uh, 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 saying Jesus is God is a doctrine started by Christianity. The book ain't saying Jesus is God, but the the religion is saying Jesus is God. So then they begin to program our minds and then they begin to try to find scriptures to deal, to stick with the uh, idea or the philosophy that Jesus is actually God. But it doesn't make sense when you read your book and realize it. So you see that Christianity actually goes against its own Bible. And I began to realize that two years ago while I was still preaching and pastoring. Uh, it wasn't making sense and it wasn't adding up. I mean, like people celebrating Christmas and Easter, according to this book, you wouldn't be able to do that. That would actually be contrary to God. You shouldn't be eating pork. You should be obeying the Ten Commandments. And these very things that go contrary to the religious beliefs of Christianity is actually not even in this book, but Christianity claims to get their beliefs from this book. Are you understanding? Like a Catholic would say, uh, uh, we'll talk about Mary not having kids. That's the religion. That's the idea of philosophy. But the book that they say that they follow would go contrary to that actual belief, the purgatories and all these different things. So when you really want truth, the Bible says that the truth will make you free. So you're seeking truth. Truth should be able to stand against all opposition. And I hopefully you agree with that. And we're supposed to mark those that talk contrary to truth. So where I am at is the truth of the matter. The matter of fact, the truth of it is, is religion is made up by man. It's man's way trying to explain explain God or what they believe go uh, about God. But it's not necessary that God had told these specific people to write this certain book so he could speak to us about what he said. That's where you'll begin to realize that religion, again, is man's way trying to explain God, but it's not that God directly explained it to them and that they wrote it down for others to come and understand and read. So I hopefully that you, you guys understand that. And I'm asking you Christians, anybody, uh, I'm not calling out names, but I will say like some of the top YouTube pastors Pastors, I guess Pastor Dow, who I was ordained by at one point in time. But the point I'm saying is I would challenge Pastor Dow to a couple questions. It doesn't mean me and him have to be enemies or that we have to fight. But I would I would challenge him, T.D. Jakes, any pastor on planet Earth that wants to say that this Bible is the infallible word of God. I am asking for a debate to anybody anybody. You understand what I'm saying? And I will surrender, repent, do whatever I have to do if you could prove to me that I'm wrong about what I have discovered about this Bible, the infallibility of the Bible. And any Christian on planet Earth that wants to say Jesus is God, I challenge you to demonstrate that in a public forum. I'll fly to your church, to your country, wherever you want to do, as long as we're using this, what we call the Bible, to prove our points. And, and my whole point of it is, is, is just the truth. And I want you to use your mind, the truth. In other words, it's absolute truth. That's what it is. So this video was made to any Christian who knows anybody who would be willing to take the debate to stand for what you believe in, that Jesus is God and that the Bible is the infallible word of God. And I would love to have an open discussion forum with anyone, especially Pastor Dow, because I believe he's the closest thing to every to the closest thing to uh, living. Actually, he lives with the Bible. says so I give him that props. But I would like to discuss openly about his belief or anyone's belief about the second coming of Jesus, according to Jesus. Can they explain how they could still believe in the second coming of Jesus according to the Bible? I'm not saying you shouldn't believe in that, but according to the Bible, with, and still say that Jesus did not tell his disciples that some of them would be alive when he comes back. I challenge anybody, and if you're really a man or woman of God, God should send you to stand for the truth and debate it publicly. 
about those three topics that I'm willing to discuss with anyone so everyone can get it settled because truth is already settled and it's already absolute. But that's not an excuse, you Christians, to say we're not going to argue God's word. You should be ready to give an answer and all you should be able to do is be able to answer the questions that I present about your beliefs. God bless you.